Welcome to everybody for, for the record. We're doing this session uh, 2021 version via Zoom. Today we will be going over the persecuted church. So let us start off with a prayer, right? We want to always give reverence to the Holy Spirit and for God just to take over. So we could just bow our heads. Heavenly Father, in this moment, we just thank you, God, for this, this Zoom. We just thank you, God, for this show today, Lord, where we're going to be emphasizing and putting a limelight on the persecuted brothers and sisters in Christ, Lord, in the Middle East. Father God, we just thank you, God. We just align every single answer, every single question, Lord, according to your perfect will, God. We just want to give you all the glory, all the power, and all the honor, God, and we just allow, God, for you to just glorify yourself tonight god as you take father god uh the and you we just yield to you god and you just take authority over everything in jesus name amen and amen so but that said y'all today's purpose uh for today's episode like i said is to remember our brothers and sisters in christ who are risking their lives you know in afghanistan they're facing tremendous persecution and even possible death at, at in the hands of the taliban right they're islamic terrorists who have taken over the nation for example of afghanistan so with the majority of Afghanistan's Christian population being comprised of people who left Islam, many people actually practice the religion of Islam and voluntarily left to follow Jesus, right? So we know that there's so much, um, you know, pushback when someone actually leaves Islam and joins, um, you know, the walk with Jesus as a believer. For instance, in CBN News, it was reported that Christians caught with a Bible are actually persecuted on the spot, right? So we see that in today's age, we there's a lot more persecution persecution and a lot more of a, you know, a pushback with everybody that is, uh, you know, that has decided to become Christian. So I'm going to go ahead and start asking some of these amazing CHH Christian uh, hip hop artists, some of the questions. Okay. So before I go ahead um, and, you know, give you the every single one of you a question. I want you all to briefly just say a little bit about yourselves for those people who may not know you in the audience that we're going to go ahead and showcase this to. So my first question is going to be for you, Diamond. So we're going to go ahead and start off with you. One of tonight's prayer requests is that we would raise up four more souls among the Taliban and transform them into Paul. We know that in the Bible, Paul, prior to his conversion, went around murdering Christians, which would include many women and children. This is not so different from the Taliban and what they're doing with Christians today. Yet Jesus commands us to love our enemies regardless. Can you can you uh, speak on the importance of loving and praying for our enemies? And praying for those who seem like they've never getting saved. So once I quit, again, um, if you can go ahead and answer the question and just give a brief introduction as to who you are. Um, Charles Diamond, uh, Diamond of Hog Mob Ministries. And um, appreciate you having us here today. Um, to talk about getting into this, man, I, I really just like to uh, use the word of God because uh, there's no better source for reference. Uh, and how we should be behaving and acting as followers of Christ. So first of all, I kind of want to put this in perspective. Um, what does God say about the persecution? So in Matthew 24, 9, he says, then they will deliver you up to tribulation and put you to death. You will be hated by all nations for my name's sake. So we are told that this is going to happen, first of all. So putting it in perspective that not only are we told that it's going to happen, but all the disciples of old went through it and actually were martyred themselves. Um, only one did not die. I mean, died of natural causes and was not actually brutally murdered for his belief in Christ Jesus. So but the good news is Matthew 16, 25 says for whoever would save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. So praise God, we are uh, given the, the, the gift of eternal life. And we will be able to save our lives by losing it. Romans 8.18 says, For consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory that is to be revealed to us. So praise God, man. We set our minds on the higher things. Now, it's it's funny. Um, I thought it was crazy today. My 
in my Bible app, my my scripture today was Second Peter three nine. It says the Lord is not slow to fulfill His promises. Some count slowness, but is patient towards you, not wishing any should perish, but that all should reach repentance. So it is the Lord's desire that all people, good, bad, righteous, uh, corrupt, and just, all would come to repentance and the knowledge of Jesus Christ to be saved. Um. So how are we supposed to deal with our enemies? Uh, Luke 27, like you said, says, but I say to you who hear, love your enemies and do good to those who hate you. Uh, Romans 12, 17 says, repay no one for evil for evil, but give thought to do what is honorable in the sight of all if possible. So as far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all beloved. Never avenge yourselves, but leave it to the uh to the wrath of God, for it is written, vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. To the contrary, y'all, we supposed to, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. And so do I will heat burning coals on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but yet overcome evil with good. Our only weapon here is, is against evil is good, and only good is Christ. Um, Matthew 5, 4 says, uh, but I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. Pray for those who persecute you so that you may be sons of your father who is in heaven. For he makes the sun rise on the evil and the good and sends rain on the just and the unjust alike. For if those for if you love those who love you, what reward is it to you? Um, do not even the tax collectors do the same. So the sinners can even love those. Of, um, it is important we are called to love all um the same way just as the lord does uh like it says uh he makes the sun rise on the evil and the good and sends rain on the just and the unjust um first peter 3 9 says do not repay evil for evil or reviling for reviling on the contrary bless for to this you were called that you that you may obtain a blessing so what we told here that we are literally called to bless those um give us evil not just not only to not repay evil for evil but to actually bless them and the word of god tells us we did this so when we signed up for this this is part of what we signed up for is to show the love of christ to all and we are actually called to his purpose that involves uh blessing those who do us evil um first john 3 13 34 says a new commandment i give to you that you love one another J here's the key just as i have loved you you also are to love one another so why do we do it? Not because they deserve it. We love them because Christ also loved us when we did not deserve it. Um, love, grace, mercy, prayer, forgiveness is not based on deserve who, deserving, who's deserving of it because we weren't. We do it because God loved us when uh, we did not deserve it. So therefore we love others the same way. Matthew 6, 14, 15 says, for if you get, forgive others, they trespass your heaven father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others, they trespasses, neither will your father forgive your trespasses. So that's real serious right there. It's even saying that we actually forgive in order to receive forgiveness. Um, so we are called to do this. We are told this would happen and we're giving instructions on how to behave when we're in these situations. So um, we're called to forgive those who persecute us, bless those who persecute us, love those who persecute us, and pray for those who persecute us, which we are here to do today. And yes, even as Paul was saved, just like Christ said, we also were once sinners. So we have to remember in our former life, in our former sin, we was no better than those who are persecuting the church now, just as Paul was. Um, we all know Paul is a mighty man, a guy who wrote a large majority of the New Testament. And we all know what a powerful man of God that he was, but we also know what he did before. So that show us that it is possible that we will pray that um many if not some who are persecuting the church in afghanistan and all the other countries that are being persecuted um for their beliefs in christ that they would come to repentance and to the knowledge of jesus christ amen thank you so much simon i actually want to also open up the floor to anybody who actually wants to go ahead and also speak on this matter how can you uh, go ahead and love your enemies if anybody wants to go ahead and take the floor please go ahead and let me know 
Um, if anybody wants to come on and just say, hey, you know what, maybe this is what the Lord has shown me, or maybe this is an actual experience I went through. There's such a power and testimony as it says in the word in Revelation. There's uh, there's so much that we can actually give to somebody else through our testimony. Does anybody else have anything to say about how to overcome and loving our enemies when it's the hardest? I'd love to add. Add to that, piggybacking what I was just saying. I went through this um, with forgiveness. Forgiveness is powerful, and love is also just as powerful. And when I first got saved, I found it very difficult where I came from to forgive. And a lot of things I thought because I knocked it off and I wasn't thinking about it, I forgave. Um, but it was easy when I realized that I didn't deserve this. As I said, we just like the scripture says that we love just as Christ loved us. We forgive just as Christ forgives us. So we had to just put ourselves in our old shoes and it will help us see others who are not there yet and realize they're no different than we were before we found repentance in Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you so much, Diamond, for that. Um, does anybody else want to chime in as well and add to that? Don't be shy. Let us know, everyone. I'm sure you all have had some testimony when y'all's old self was definitely tried. And you're like, Jesus, give me some patience. I don't want to get off the cross right now. Lord Jesus. You know, does anybody have a testimony that you guys can definitely share on how God um, used you um, in, in that way? I'll, I'll add something. Okay. So, so um, I heard I heard somebody say one time. I could, don't quote me on who it is, but um, I heard somebody say one time that forgiveness isn't for the other person; it's for you. Um, so, the, the, for unforgiveness sets these chains and these binds within our heart and within our soul and stuff like that. And um, it's it, it's not good to hold it in, but that's where I think true freedom in Christ comes into play uh, when you just throw everything on God. You know what I'm saying? So you're supposed to rejoice in the good things, give them the good things, but also give them the bad things too. So just go ahead, throw it upon them um, and let him, let him heal that hurt and everything that's going on. And um, it'll, it'll set you free internally uh, just by doing that. So that's all I wanted to add. Awesome. Thank you so much, Sean. We have really appreciate that feedback. So with that being said, y'all, I'm going to go ahead now to our lady woman of God on this Zoom, Brie. Okay, the next question is for you. So um, remember what I was saying, if you can just give a little introduction on yourself. And the question for you is, we also know that the Taliban has forbidden women from receiving education and has targeted non-Muslim women as sex slaves to hand on over as soldiers. And that is very, very, very traumatizing on itself. We want to hear from you. What are your thoughts concerning that? And once again, if you can give our audience a little brief introduction on you. Okay. Uh, hi, my name is Bree Smiles and um, I'm a media missionary and, uh, you know, a seeker of truth and a decoder of the times. Um, so I've been following this situation very closely um, because I feel like it's so incredibly spiritual what we're going through right now. And if we don't see it through a spiritual lens, well, we miss it. We miss what hour we're in and we're not able to arm ourselves um, properly. And I think that it's really relevant to state that, you know, um, this war that we're fighting right now, it's not with bullets, it's not with guns, but it's with ideologies. You know, what happened in Afghanistan and the whole Middle East, um, they are celebrating right now. They are celebrating um, a victory in their minds of Islam over Christianity. They are celebrating a victory of um, <clears throat> the, their Taliban over, um, the infidels, <laughs> they are celebrating Allah over Jesus. That is what they are celebrating over there right now. And, and a lot of their, um, ideology, um, in their minds is the fulfillment of prophecy to them. So this is very real for them. And, um, you know, Islam, they're very oppressive with women. Um, if you see, you know, women over there, they're covered from head to toe. 
you know, um, they are extremely oppressed. You know, I was reading about, there was, um, there was a group of women that did protests and they were actually beaten. They did protest because they wanted to have a voice in their new government. They wanted to have equality, some sense of equality. Um, and it, uh, protests over there are very different than protests in the United States. So I want you to go with me for a second into a very oppressive culture and a very oppressive religion. Um, they weren't given a voice. They weren't even considered to be given a voice. You know what they were, what happened to them is that they were beaten publicly with metal rods um, they, and sticks. And uh, people actually had to disband because they started shooting into the crowds. The level of radical um, pursuit that's happening over there is that their, their faith, their Islamic faith, they have a specific code that they are going by. And anything that infiltrates that um, is getting shot down, including Christians, um, including anybody that was an ally with Americans. Um, you know, when the Taliban took over the government, uh, they went, the first people they went after was any allies with America. So they hate Americans, number one. The second people that they targeted were Christians. Um, after they finished persecuting the allies of, of America, they were literally making phone calls to Christians saying, hey, we know where you are. We know your name and we're coming for you next. Um, they hate Christians. Christians are a direct enemy of their faith. Um, and so I think that it's very important to note that what we're going through right now is spiritual. Um, they are after Israel. <laughs> they actually... Um, they had white flags up. And if you study the Taliban, their symbol is a black flag, which is extremely symbolic. They have white flags resurrected right now, but they're actually gonna start resurrecting black flags to symbolize uh, we're in war. And they're not gonna stop until they infiltrate Israel and there's a black flag that hands on or that stands on the capital of Israel. Um, there's something that's called, and I, I wrote it down because I think it's very, very powerful. Um, in the main end time prophecies of Islam, their, their armies are carrying black flags and they're going to come from an area of the East or it's called Khorasan. And it's an ancient Khorasan today is called Pakistan, Iran, and Afghanistan. Um, so they're already, there's a form of Taliban. It's called Taliban, um, it's called ISIS-K. And they are representing Khorasan. So what's happening in their, their, um, their scriptures is that the fulfillment of their prophecy is happening and with Allah. And so this is huge for them. And anybody that opposes their faith, um, they are going to be a casualty in this spiritual war. Um, so Christians, you know, uh, are on top of that list. And I want to make the claim, and I'm closing with this, is that what happened with our current administration, they failed miserably. It started with the Bush administration, carried out with the Obama administration. It kind of slowed down with the Trump administration, but the, administ the Biden administration has done a horrible job at how they handled the pullout of America from Afghanistan. And I want to I want to drive in this point. We armed the Taliban. Our government armed the Taliban with 80 billion. Let me say that again. 80 billion dollars of military equipment that we literally handed over to the Taliban, making the um, enemies, our enemies, the most armed military force in the world. Now, if you wanna tell me that that was an accident, I, I can't get down with that. It was the greatest devastation that has happened 
in the history of America, these were the same people that killed 3,000 Americans. And we, um, they are celebrating in victory because they won. They won in this particular instance. Um, and our current administration, the Biden administration, um, have failed, incredibly failed um, in how they handle this entire situation. They are now emboldened. The Taliban are now empowered. Um, our, our former allies, um, they don't trust us anymore. Our enemies laugh at us because how we handled this situation. And like I said, they are Islam is celebrating a victory in their minds that Islam beat Christianity, that Allah has won over Jesus. This is huge for them. This is huge for them. And for America to be a country that is founded on Christian principles. We are their enemies. They hate us because we are a direct threat to their faith. And if you don't think, if you don't think that they're infiltrating right now with terrorist groups, if you don't think that they're, they aren't already here on U.S. soil, you're sadly mistaken. And I have no trust in this current administration, seeing how they just overnight took all of our, our military left, left American civilians there as hostages, left our allies who have, who have partnered with America for over 20 years, left them, didn't care, pulled out our military, left civilians there and armed our enemies with $80 billion. That is the leadership that we are under right now. I hear you, sis. I hear you. And I definitely wanted to touch base on a little bit of what you just mentioned. And I even was getting a moments of like how even Queen Esther, she should up, she stood up for her people. Right. And I believe that in this time, um, the Lord is really raising up Esther's. And I see that in you as you're being very vocal, because sometimes it's not convenient to be politically correct because of so many things. And I believe as believers to be standing on the truth and being unshakable and being very well led by our conviction and standing up and being that trumpet of truth when we see jesus jesus did not you know sugarcoat anything he said things as he were and i believe what you said was very on point you know um when uh the taliban came into power they released many prisoners and many prisoners that were actually jailed some of them are actually from isis some of them were actually wanted by the u.s government and it is believed that they have actually infiltrated the united states when you know so many people were coming up board and it was there was no being vexed and whatnot through the process and just the thought of that and I believe that this is even more conversation that we can definitely go into but I believe for you know in terms of staying on the topic of like just the woman like I've even speak um seen news reports of the Taliban in their you know language sending out flyers saying hey if you have someone who is under the age of I believe 30 or 35 and she has either been widowed or divorced she's going to be now given over to be married as, sex to slave. as a sex slave yes and if yes. your daughter is younger than I believe the age of either 8 or 12 from what I believe reading um she will also now be put into as a sex slave there's even parents um and it's so unfortunate to even hear this parents who are actually killing their own children because they rather see them killed and dead than in the hands of the Taliban. And I believe as anybody, if you're a parent or want to be a parent one day, I, I would never want to be in your shoes and, and just how, and it's so gripping to know that there are people who are believers having to make such horrible, catastrophic, life-changing decisions in a moment where it's literally Jesus or die. That is literally the statement written and tattooed in their heart. And I believe it's definitely a situation that should be a wake up call as believers here in the United States of America, at least. 
where we have much more freedom than they do, even if we're going through many things in our government and politics, in a, you know, in, in just in so many spheres, right? I believe that it's so important for us to be well-educated, well-rounded yes. um, individuals and that we're not just trying to put our head in the sand, you know, and just trying to like, you know, I just don't want to pay attention to that because maybe that's not part of my call or God has not mm. for that. Because I believe at the end of the day, we should stand on, you know, the truth. And I believe with what's happening with women, and going back to your question, I believe that's something so, you know, horrific, because I'm sure that we all have sisters, you know, for the men here, you have wives, you have daughters, and to for to know that there's women, you know, who are literally being told, hey, if you don't mark your ex, literally what is being told to them is you need to mark an ex in your house. If you have someone young of a woman younger than the age of eight or 12, and if you don't, your whole family will actually be executed on the spot. And I believe yes. that in itself is horrific. Plus the so, so many circumstances like starvation happening right now. And there's so many things that, you know, are happening with, you know, women going on. So thank you so much, Brie, for definitely um, touching base on that. I believe it's very important for our audience to be well-educated and well-versed, you know, and to think for yourselves, to think with the mind of Christ, I think, at the end of the day, because that's what the Bible commands us to do and to be renewing our mind daily with everything that, you know, we read on a daily basis. So thank you so much, Brie. I definitely appreciate you, sis. I definitely seen uh, Queen Esther anointing upon you. So. So I'm um, definitely for anybody else, um, you know, we just as I'm asking these questions, if you all want to go ahead and chime in after um, a specific individual has uh, the question, you all are welcome to. Does anybody have anything to say concerning the women who right now are being, you know, persecuted and who are being put as sex slaves? Does anybody have any commentary in addition to this? Sis, I'm sorry. I just wanted to make one final point. I, I, you know, I want to, I want to highlight why the woman, you know, why the woman, um, you know, uh, the, the enemy has a special hatred for women. Think about it. When, when the enemy, um, had his encounter with humanity first, he went to the woman and that was very strategic. Mm -hmm. He has a special hatred towards the woman because the woman is the portal of humanity. She is, she carries the womb of humanity. You know, she, um, she's the one that harvests creation that God, you know, allowed her to be the bearer of, of humanity. So, um, because we are the portals of creation, um, the enemy hates us. <laughs> um, and so if you look at the Islamic faith, um, and you do, and you parallel it with Bible, um, there's this very interesting book and it's called, uh, the Islamic Antichrist. And I encourage anybody to go out and read it, but it talks, it, it makes the parallel between the Islamic savior and the Antichrist of the Bible. And they do this. What's happening right now, um, is it's very demonic. Everything that is happening over there in Afghanistan and the, um, the the jihad movement global takeover what they believe in when you study it to its core it's extremely antichrist driven it's extremely demonic it's extremely hateful they guise it under they guise it under this like this this guise of peace but it is anything but they're literally raping women they're selling them as sex sex slaves they're killing people they're beheading people they're hanging people that is not the, that is not um, anything that has to do with the God of my Bible. My God is a, the source of love, you know, and this God that they serve, this Allah that they serve is very hateful, very vengeful. If you are not a, um, a radical in their faith, you are considered an infidel and they have the right to kill you in a very torturous fashion. So when you start to make the connection, about what's going on right now. Like I said, this is not a war that's fought with bullets and guns. This is an ideology war. And if you know your Bible, then you know that revelations has to fulfill itself. And you know that there's going to be um, a religion of deception that comes and tries to infiltrate. Um, and that's what we're going through right now. We're going through a very anti-spirit type of 
um, a spirit that's take that's that's surrounding us right now, and not only over there in Islam, but what's going on in our own government. So um, I just want people to, like I said, see this through a spiritual lens. This is not something natural that is happening. We are going. We are in a spiritual warfare. Amen. I definitely agree with that, Bree. Thank you. Thank you so much. And now on to our next question. This question now is going to be for five. Um, I'm actually going to, uh, you know, ask you a question as well. And if you can go ahead and introduce yourself uh, prior to answering. So I want to know, we know that Christians in Afghanistan are facing so much suffering at this moment, as we have just mentioned with Bree. Yet during these hard times, we're still called to keep our faith, right? Some of the times it's very difficult to do that when we are going, we're being pressed by all sides. So um, talk to us about what hardships and trials do to our faith. You know, what it's so important to maintain a strong faith in Christ in the midst of difficulty. And please share a testimony with us of how you were able to maintain your faith in Christ in the midst of a difficulty as well. And once again, if you can please introduce yourself to our audience. Hey, what's good, y'all? It's five. Uh, Man, just a dude who passionately loves Jesus, man, was saved. Uh, from a crack and a meth, meth addiction, uh, instantly, no withdrawals, no rehab, no 12 steps, just Jesus uh, completely turned my life around, man. And so, uh, you know, uh, honored to be here tonight with y'all, man, and, and just uh, chop this up, man. But yeah, uh, definitely, you know, uh, I, I, while you're reading that question, you know, a, a song popped in my head by this dude named Thizzle. He has a song called I Signed Up to Die. You know what I'm saying? And so it's crazy, you know, because we live in the United States, man. And over here, we're so spoiled, man. And, you know, I always tell people all the time uh, what 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 people in other countries uh, like Africa and, and, and people that are of faith in other countries call demons. We, we give a medical name. You know what I'm saying? Like we're so spoiled. We'll, we'll, we'll say you're bipolar. You know what I'm saying? What Jesus said, a double minded man is unstable in all his ways. We'll let a man diagnosis as bipolar. And what that means is having two minds, like literally is what they diagnose you with. And so we'll we'll take that in the U.S. because we're so spoiled with this stuff, man. But, you know, um, I I fully believe any believer over there that that is a devout believer, they knew exactly what they were signing up for, man, because, you know, uh, the name of Jesus ain't no joke. It'll get you killed, man. It, it, it always has. You know what I mean? So uh, since he popped on the scene, that name has been getting people killed, man. And, you know, we're fortunate enough to live over here in the United States, you know, where we can claim the name Christian and say, oh, I'm a Christian this, I'm a Christian that. And the funny thing is that a lot of us don't even want to claim that Christian this or Christian that tag. You know what I mean? And like we actually have the privilege to do that. I guarantee you folks over there that are losing their lives. Uh, would love to say, look, man, I'm a Christian janitor. I'm a Christian anything, you know. They got to be all uh, discreet and undercover with their stuff, man, uh, with the underground churches and stuff. And so for this stuff going on over there, man, it's it's a tragedy, man. But one thing I I rejoice in and one thing I know, you know, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. You know what I'm saying? And, and, And that's one thing I was talking about when I started this off saying I signed up to we signed up to die. You know what I mean? Like, and I don't think a lot of us, especially in America, we don't take that serious. You know what I'm saying? Like, we don't know how serious of a statement that is. Like, bro, you know, I, I remember um, I had this homeboy who had signed up to go to the army or whatever. And uh, I was in Colleen, Texas, Fort Hood or whatever. And uh, we started this church. The church, church started, you know, flourishing kind of. And uh, dude, dude got uh, his deployment papers. You know what I'm saying? So now he over here in the, uh, we, we having a prayer night and he over here crying like, oh, I don't want to go this, that, and third. You know what I'm saying? And for me, I, I'm sitting back and looking because me, I'm just a realist and, and, and I see the real of things. I'm like, bro, you signed up for this. Like, like you, you took those four years, you took that moment, that signing bonus, you signed up for this. Like you knew there was a possibility that you were going to get deployed. Ain't no use in crying now. You know what I'm saying? And so I think for us as believers, what we don't understand and what we don't really take to heart, especially in America, 
is that when you uh, get baptized or you come to the faith of Jesus Christ, like people are going to hate you. Yeah. Like, and, and it's not just people, bro. It's like the enemy. It's like demons. Like we battle not against flesh and blood. Like I'm not worried about the people. You know, I, I was just thinking the other day, I said, man, I graduated from, from uh, haters and flesh and blood. Now my haters are all, they, they not carnal. Like the folks that want to see me dead, they not carnal, bro. You know what I'm saying? Cause, cause what we out here doing, you know, and, and I see uh, my homie threat on here, seven deuce. Like, well, I, I know the type of ministries they have and, and like the stuff they out here doing, like you better believe all the hell is against them. Like they don't want them to pop off in these streets. Like they popping off because you know what I'm saying? And so I think in the United States, though, we're so spoiled and, and, and we don't have to have that. But it's gonna it's coming to that point right now. And, and, and it might be even through this COVID thing. You know what I'm saying? Like God told me from the beginning of this COVID thing, the whole reason this thing is going on is because he wants to take the uh, uh, the church, the voice of the church. He wants to stop the, the, the voice of the worshiper. Satan is trying to take the worshiper's voice. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, when it first started, Churches and casinos both closed down. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's, you, it's got to be something deeper when a casino chooses to close their doors because the world ain't trying to miss no money, dog. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, it's got to be something deeper. So you have to look at that, man. And I, I think we're so spoiled in the United States where we haven't got to that level, but it, it's getting there and they're trying to groom us uh, for that with this stuff that's going on right now. So I say even us being uh, persecuted, like, when you get COVID, they send you to the hospital to be alone. You, your, your family can't come and visit you. You know what I'm saying? Do you know that Christianity is all about community? You know what I'm saying? Like, we were never meant to walk this thing alone. And so what, what happens is they want to shut our hospitals down and send us to their hospitals to die. And so we're all under this persecution thing right now, whether it's physically or spiritually. But there's something happening in the earth right now where uh, every believer is being tested. Every believer, you know what I'm saying, is being tested. And I, yeah. and I think what it comes down to is I think God is just separating the the, the uh, wheat from the tear. You know what I'm saying? That's what I believe is what's going on. But I, I definitely pray for those people over there, man, because they have it hard. They have it super hard over there, man. Wow, thank you so much. I think that was very on point and very insightfulness. I love when you said that is removing the wheat from the tear, right? He's removing the the superficial, like Christian, right, from the actual disciple believer of Christ. Um, and there's many facets to that in itself. The Bible says that we are like a tree planted along the riverbank, where a deep will grow, uh, very deep in the love of Christ. That's where roots mm. will grow in, right? And when we abide in Him and He abides in us, we will bear much fruit, and it will be effortless as well. So I think it's really important. Can you just touch a little bit more base on how it is that for you, you kept your faith during a difficult time? When was there a time in your life, five, where your faith was tested um, maybe through a trial through a tribulation that for you you can reflect on today and say wow um, you know definitely the statement that says a faith that is not tested cannot be trusted was very relevant to my life and I can't imagine how much of a testing of the faith it is for brothers and sisters in Christ in Afghanistan who right now are put literally between a rock and a hard place when it comes to their faith so if you could just share a little bit of a testimony once again of how you kept your faith in a trial yeah, yeah for me it, it, it's kind of easy man because you know when i got saved man my aunt uh you know she had stage four cancer uh you know it was about 10 years ago but man i would always call her while i was on meth crack and she would always pick up the phone talk to me for hours on the phone and, you know I'm, I'm geeking i'm on meth you know what i'm saying or she would drive to where i was and just tell me how much jesus loved me man and so you know, she, she was battling cancer, man, had stage four cancer. And so, you know, uh, probably that's probably like my hardest try to get through was, you know, watching her, uh, uh, you know, pass away from lung cancer, never have to smoke a cigarette in her life, serve God since she was nine years old. And I mean, when I tell you she was devout, like I've never seen nobody love like Christ, like she loved like Christ. You know what I'm saying? Like, and, and that's the reason I'm here today. But just seeing that and seeing how she worshiped God, uh, to, until her last breath, even though she had cancer, you know, uh, for me, that helps me, you know, even though she had served them all her life, never smoked cigarettes, never went out to clubs, never drank, never did none of this stuff, you know, and, and, and she ends up getting cancer and passed away. And all the while, never, never uh, cursing God, 
always smiling, always cheerful in the pulpit, still preaching, still doing what she was doing. And so for me seeing that, that helps me get through, you know, times when I go through trials and, and tribulations. Cause I'm like, look, man, it ain't all that bad, man. I seen a woman with stage four cancer get out here and, and, and preach the word and, and love people to her final breath. She, she, she laying in bed in the hospital, people coming in to encourage her, walking out encouraged. And so for me, that's something I look back to and I always think, man, you know, I ain't got it. I ain't got it that bad. There's a lot of people that have it a, a, a lot worse, man. But, you know, the Bible talks about how we should count it all joy when we fall into diverse uh, trials and temptations. You know what I'm saying? Because it's building our faith. You know what I'm saying? It's like you were saying, a faith that can't be tested, can't be trusted. So if it's building our faith, man, we should rejoice in it and, and walk through it. But just trust God and, and trust Jesus through it, man. That's what he gave his life for. Awesome. Yes, I think that's very on point. Amen. Amen to that. Thank well, you no. five so much uh, for that response. And now we're going to go ahead and move on to our next host. Uh, so this question is for Sean, right? So Sean, the question for you is, so Afghani Christians are still willing to meet despite tremendous risk and challenge in doing so. According to the voice of the martyrs, believers in Afghanistan often must keep their faith a secret. They are currently living in hiding and there's no official church or church buildings. How should this motivate us as believers here, at least in the Western side of the world, to commit to congregating regularly with our fellow believers? So, Sean, if once again, you can introduce your, a little bit about yourself to our audience, and we want to hear from you on this. How, should, how motivated should we be? And what would you say to believers that right now are not even congregating and encouraging them to go ahead and do so? Mm -hmm. Well, first thing, my name is Sean Oliveira, just uh, humble. I try to be a humble guy uh, after God's own heart, man. Um, I love, I truly love God and I truly try to love people just the same. Um, and just shout out to all the goats in here, man. Yo, seven dudes, threat, five, man. This is straight fam in the building. Brittany, nice to see y'all, man. For real, man. This is, um, this is one of the things I believe will strengthen us as believers on the Western side of things, um, just to have these type of conversations, to stay knowledgeable and even know what's going on. Um, and I, I will admit I'm probably the least educated guy in this chat, uh, just because I don't like watching the news too much, just because you watch this station, you're hearing this side of things, you watch this station, you're hearing that side of things. But that's a whole nother topic. We ain't going to get on that right now. Um, but I think one thing that that will really help us is um, when we have these conversations to understand what real persecution is. OK, because um, us on the Western side, if we don't get our Starbucks in the morning, we tripping. You know what I'm saying? There's a lot of things that we value and there's a lot of things that we hold up to a certain standard that messes with our joy. And the Bible talks severely in depth about how important our joy as a believer should be. Um, so it, these things affect our joy and they really shouldn't be. And um, one thing that, that, that things like this will do will help us is to understand the urgency of the gospel. Like that, that's one thing that God was really placing in my heart is that us on Western society, we have urgency on church. We have urgency on Bible studies. We have urgency on Things that 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 uh, it, it's not the gospel. The gospel is what needs to be urging to the people and to their hearts because that's the only thing that's really going to change them. A church service isn't going to change anybody, but only the gospel will, right? So an illustration that God gave to me real quick was it's kind of like trying to go to the gym and you measure your success due to the most unfit person in the room. You feel what I'm saying? Like you go to the gym and there's this unfit person on the other side and you're like, yo. I don't really got to run that much today because, you know, that dude, I'm in better shape than he is. You feel what I'm saying? So it's like that. That was one illustration. And then that could go biblically deep when it comes to us judging our righteousness according to Christ's righteousness. So we always want to sit there and be like, yeah, well, I mean, I lied, but I didn't kill nobody today. You feel what I'm saying? Like we always have these weird standards that we hold ourselves to when it Christ needs to be the only standard 
that we hold ourselves to. Um, so the, the biggest thing when it comes to, uh, at least to me, is being aware of these things, being you know knowledgeable that these things are happening because they are, and then um, also learn to re reevaluate ourselves and our standards and what we hold near and dear to our hearts. And when we see these things happening, then we need to be like, all right, I don't really need to get pissed about my Starbucks today because there's real persecution going on. Like when you go to church and they serve coffee in the front lot in the front lobby area, but it's cold. And you're like, oh man, look at this cold coffee, though. Blah, blah, blah. Like we trip on the wrong things. Um, so yeah, that 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 was my biggest thing, man. Being aware that these things are happening because we can't be ignorant to the situation either, but we need to be knowledgeable and then also reevaluate our standards. And I think that'll help us bring way more urgency to the gospel and congregate more. It'll bring that sense of urgency. Amazing. Thank you so much, Sean, for that response. What would you say for those who right now who are living in Afghanistan as believers and need to keep their faith as a secret? Um, how would that um, be relevant to us, in the, at least in the Western part of the world, like for people who want to be secret agents for Jesus, when Jesus is like, you know, um, don't, you know, when, if you recognize me before others, I'll recognize you before my father, as I'm pray paraphrasing. Um, what would you say and encourage believers who maybe right now are struggling and right now they're like secret agents for Jesus, but they're not very bold. There's a, bio, there's a, there's a reason why the word of God says, do not be ashamed, you know, of the right. gospel, right? And there's right. many people that have to, it's not because they're ashamed, you know, of Afghanistan. It's because right now they're facing heavy persecution. You know, if we can reflect on that and, you know, if you can share your stance and how, you know, they have to kind of keep themselves hidden because if not, they die. But many of them are actually willing to die. Then compared to here in the United States where people want to be secret agents, what are your viewpoints on that? And what would you encourage someone that right now is maybe ashamed of the gospel because of a rejection or intimidation of man? Man, um, it, it's hard, in all honesty, um, just because we are so far removed from the situation. We're not, you know, we're, we are completely disconnected on this side of the <laughs> on Western civilization. But I will say to stand strong and I will piggyback off of what uh five said and it's it's kind of like we signed up for this and it could very well happen on our side just as it's happening over there so it, it we need th th this is something that the bible tells us we we should be prepared to die for we really should um if we are just doing this because we want to be cool as musicians or we want to be cool musically, or we think we're a thug because we got Christ in our life now. Like we're doing this all for the wrong reasons. Like it, it, it this is something that death should be. What well, death is apparent. Death is apparent to everybody. Sooner or later, we're all gonna die. But it's like, where do you want to go? And again, where does the urgency of the gospel play into your life? Um, so this is something I, I believe we all should definitely be prepared to die for. Um, and right now we're doing small strides in Western civilization. You know what I'm saying? An education system. We're trying to keep God in our education system. We're trying to keep God in the government. We're trying to keep God in all these places. But um, God needs to stay number one in our hearts first. And listen, I mean, it, it, I think it comes down straight to as if somebody, you should never be ashamed of the gospel. So that doesn't mean you have to be outlandish with it. That doesn't mean you have to run the streets naked and go crazy and stuff like that. And like there, 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 there are certain ways you can go about it, but you should never be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. So if somebody comes up to us and asks us, yo, you believer in Jesus Christ, you should be able to say with a full heart, yes. And whatever the cost may be, it costs Christ his life, whatever the cost may be. You got to be OK with that in this walk. That that is something that is not preached on many pulpits here in Western civilization, the cost of Christianity. And it doesn't matter what the cost should be. We should be able to stand firm in what we believe in. Yes. And yes. And even to add on to that um, recently, even within YouTube guidelines, anytime you speak about COVID-19, right, or C-19, yeah. should I say technically, so we don't get censored here. Um, if you put the prayer is to one of the solutions, you're actually banned, you're censored, you're flagged. And I think that speaks a lot uh -huh. to like 
what's going on in today's society. But I definitely encourage what you said that, you know, God has to be, Jesus has to be in the throne of our hearts, right? So we don't put anything else because people can even make ministry idols, right? So right. making sure that we keep the first things first. The main thing, the main thing, which is Jesus and, you know, the gospel, which is the, the most central core of everything, you know? So yeah. thank you so much, Sean, for your feedback and your response. We definitely appreciate it. So next up on here is going to be threat. So threat, I definitely, I want you to please, like I mentioned earlier, for you to go ahead and introduce a little bit about yourself. And for you, it is, you know, when, when it comes to Christians living in countries where persecution does not exist, you know, how should the impact of the faith of believers living in more free societies, you know, how should, how um, impactful should the life of believers be when it comes to, you know, those nations? And what do you think should be the relationship between the persecuted church and the non-persecuted church, you know, how would that look like for um for you? How can you tie the two in together? So once again, introduce yourself, please, uh, to our audience. Thank you. Uh, it's an honor to be here. Um, I'm thankful to be connected with all the people on this call. Uh, my name is Threat. I'm a Christian rapper. And, uh, you know, when I started off in my walk, I didn't know any other Christians. Uh, so I remember that being like the first hurdle that I had to cross is meeting other people who were Christians. And now, you know, I'm very fortunate to know a lot of people that are not just Christians, but they're in ministry. And we can have conversations like these instead of, you know, very shallow and uh, elementary conversations. So I'm grateful for that. I'm grateful for all of you. Um, to answer the question, I think the way that I see the whole persecuted versus non-persecuted church is we should be looking, if if we are in fact the non-persecuted church, we should be looking at this more of a, of a training grounds uh, for persecution. I love that. Because, because the Bible says that we all will be persecuted. Uh, I grabbed the scripture before the call. Yes, and all who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. And that's 2 Timothy 3.12, but that's written in several places in the Bible. So you got to live with an expectation for the Bible to be true in your life. And I feel like that's what a lot of people are missing is that they think that they look at scriptures or people in the Bible and the Old Testament and stuff like that. Oh, this person went through that, but that was the Old Testament. Or, you know, they, they remove themselves from what the Bible's saying. And it really dawned on me. I got kicked out of a church one time. And then the Lord shows me the scripture about you will be kicked out of churches. And then one time I had made this very nice dinner for some people who had been friends of mine, but it was revealed to me later, they were enemies of mine. But I remember the Holy Spirit telling me, I prepare a table for you in the midst of your enemies. And I said, wow, that scripture came true in my life. And he started to show me, God started to reveal to me, he, I intend on making all these scriptures real in your life. You know, So when you start to get to, to the scriptures that are tough to deal with, those are the ones you need to be preparing for. So the Bible says you're going to be persecuted. Expect that. Believe that you know, like the first step is believing, believe you will be persecuted. Another thing is this, persecution does come to us in different forms. And then we do, a lot of times we do the wrong thing with it. So somebody may, you know, attack you verbally and then you react with attacking them back verbally or, or, you know, whatever, cutting them off, cut off season, whatever it is, however you react, that's a small form of persecution in which you have the opportunity to apply what you've been reading, what you've been studying, what you've been learning in the Bible. Forgiveness, like Diamond started off talking about, that's a big one, you know, and I'm currently like getting a new level of forgiveness. God's dealing with me on that now. Um, but the different things that we can apply in the Bible that we're not applying, uh, there are levels, you know? So, you know, I was, I was uh, confronted by somebody today and it caught me off guard and it was the enemy, you know, God confirmed enemy coming at me. Maybe it was because I was gonna be on this call today and talk about persecution and stuff. But, um, you know, I was, I had to, thankfully the Lord was showing me in that moment, this is your opportunity to deal with this thing in a Christ-like manner. We gotta be preparing ourselves to deal with stuff in Christ. Cause it's not always gonna be that someone comes to you with a gun to your head and says, do you love Jesus? Yes or no. Sometimes it's gonna be somebody who knows you, who comes to you a different kind of way where you, you're not thinking about the whole spiritual difference. You are thinking about whatever they're talking about. And then you dealing with that thing in the flesh, we got to train ourselves to deal with things in the spirit. Another thing is that when you're dealing with stuff in the spirit, 
you're not a victim. You know what I'm saying? You're never, you're never a victim because God didn't call us to be victims. And we do have power and authority. You see that Jesus didn't die until he gave his life up, right? So it's, it's, not, it's not that you become this passive Christian and then you just got to get killed for the gospel the first time somebody you know, doesn't like you and is willing to take it there. It don't got to be that either. I feel like we can be using this time to be trained, to train ourselves up, uh, to exercise the authority, you know, and then God will use us and maximize our ministry and, and do whatever he wants to do for as long as he wants to do it until he decides it's time for you to go ahead and give up your life if you're in that situation, right? Persecution will come. We don't, we don't know if that means that we're all going to be martyrs, but it will come. We need to be prepared for the worst and then start demonstrating, uh, you know, what Christ has called us to be now. You know, don't be the person that holds out your phone when you see people in a fist fight. Be a peacemaker because blessed are the peacemakers. And if you get persecuted in that situation, blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness sake. And then another scripture that I just wanted to mention before I go is um, the Bible says in 1 Peter 2.20, for what, what credit is it if you're being uh, for your own faults and take it patiently? But when you do good and suffer, if you take it patiently, this is commendable before God, right? So like I was in the whole dealing with people in the flesh and stuff, if you're suffering like that, you know, you're wasting your time, this valuable time that you have here on earth. I feel like Jesus's ministry wasn't, you know, so long. It wasn't years and years and years because he came in and did what he had to do and then had the luxury of leaving, you know, not, not in a luxurious way, but, you know, some of us are dragging it out. We need to go ahead and get in, get with the program. So to also to your question, you know, we can see what people are dealing with overseas and start to see what that looks like and we know what to prepare for. It's not that we have to be ignorant. We can see what people are dealing with and start getting ourselves ready for when it comes to us. I definitely, definitely agree as well. And I think there's different forms of even persecution that we can face here in the Western church, like losing our reputation, maybe losing a couple of friends, or maybe having to stand up in righteousness, even when we have business deals coming to us for all of us, we're in, you know, the realm of business and sometimes having to, you know, shoot down opportunities that may seem like they're good, but they're not, uh, you know, they're not coming necessarily from God. And that would put our faith in, you know, in a kind of a weird position and would not. And I think that sometimes, you know, I, I, I think you touched it very, very on point, you know, and, and many things that you said. So thank you so much, Thread, for that amazing response. And definitely, I believe that that's a, such a good connection between the persecuted and the non-persecuted church. So with that being said, thank you. Thank you so much. And now we're going to go to our next two speakers so this last question okay is more of a meteor question and from my own personal i am a lover of evangelism okay so this is more an evangelistical question so this question is going to be both for seven deuce and for six um and this question is going to pertain to muslims right to people technically in you know in islam and um you know before you go ahead and answer the question, please go ahead and introduce a little bit by yourself. But we have seen that there's many refugees who are coming from Afghanistan or the Middle East in general to the United States who are not believers. Many of them are actually from, you know, the faith of Islam and who technically are Muslim. So for you, how does this present an opportunity for you as a believer to preach and to evangelize to people who come from the Islam faith? I know there's many testimonies of people who have shared their um, experience of supernatural encounters with Jesus Christ through a dream or through a vision. And they have, you know, from one moment to the next turned into believers of Christ. Yet we find there's many people here who are refugees, like I said, and maybe that's definitely not their case and maybe sold out to their faith how can you um as a believer speak to them evangelize to those who don't know the faith you know and being in a position of being alert and willing to share your faith so i'm gonna go ahead and first start with seven do so once again if you can introduce a little bit about yourself and concerning the question of evangelism towards the people of the islam faith um, 
For those who don't know, I'm Seven Deuce. Uh, I'm just a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I'm not going to put no titles on nothing. I'm just, you know, I'm just like the rest of us here, man. We just pursuing that mission, you know, to go out and make disciples. You know what I'm saying? Um, I would say for me, the gospel is enough. The gospel of Jesus Christ is enough. Scripture is enough. So I think at times as we begin to oversaturate and almost become motivational speakers at times when we get in the presence of an individual and whatever their faith may be. And a lot of the times it turns into a, an unhealthy debate that doesn't bear any fruit due to because now we're trying to swing swords with individuals to, to be all the way honest with individuals who are more, more devoted to their worldview and their ideology than half of the believers that I can say I done touched the field with at times and even myself included at times, just to be honest with you. Um, so I think at times we have to just understand when it comes to meeting somebody where they are. And I would say the first thing that I, that I like to do with an individual is begin to build a relationship with them, break bread with them. You know what I'm saying? And really understand and study what Jesus really did. He began to build a rapport with individuals before he began to indoctrinate anybody where the gospel even came across. So I think the biggest thing is to be there to serve individuals and show them by actions through love and just allow the question and the conversation to spark amongst that. And then just understanding their their view, you know, their faith, their view and understanding what it means and how devoted they've been since childhood. You got to understand they're born into this. They're, they're born into this. Half of us, you know, what I'm saying we've went to church with GMO on Sundays and you know what I'm saying? We're still in the streets. Like these individuals every day, they, they sleep, breathe, they wake up, they go to bed with this, um, you know, with this view of being Islamic, Muslim, you know what I'm saying? Even the Taliban. And they're, they're prepared to die. Like they're really prepared for it. They don't just talk about it. You know what I'm saying? A lot of the times we get out here with these cliche statements, how we're prepared to really, you know, suffer for the gospel and really lose our life for it. But half the times there's times that will present themselves that I can say, I honestly, by the, by, by the looks of not to, you know, discredit any of our brothers and sisters, but some individuals don't fully believe every single thing that's in the Bible. And when it comes to their faith, they're dealing with not having the faith that they thought they had and really having to examine themselves when they're hitting that forefront with only putting half the armor on. A lot of individuals are just lacing their boots and leaving their sword at the house. So I would say just to be honest, when it comes to the boldness in having faith and understanding that even through these relationships, being willing to, for the sake of when it comes time to really God opens that door to preach the gospel is do it in a loving manner, but also understanding that loving there there's boldness there. You know what I'm saying? There's assertiveness that's there. You know what I'm saying? And being willing to also lose for the sake of that relationship when the gospel is preached, because the gospel is very offensive, the true gospel the unwatered down version, you know what I'm saying? When you really preach the true gospel, it's very offensive to the flesh. And so I would say, just to be honest, when the opportunity presents itself is making sure that you do it, you know, on point. But I would say nine times out of 10, when you're really like the opportunity presents itself, it's going to it's going to present itself later on after you've already built a relationship with this individual. Because I got individuals that's like that, you know, what I'm saying and, and I do that because I don't want to just come across like all I'm trying to do is preach the gospel to you. And if you don't receive it, I get on my way. Because I've seen individuals do that. They'll they'll think within a moment that as soon as I preach the gospel to you, that I, I need to be the one that reaps the harvest and seeing that you truly been saved and you've accepted salvation, but not understanding a lot of the times them seeds were planted. And you're not there to even see if this individual has truly received salvation or the gospel yet. So I would say just understanding that when them opportunities do present themselves, if you didn't necessarily see the fruit be the fruit bared you can't necessarily say that this individual may not accept Christ into their life later on down the road once somebody else came to water that seed or the Lord spent their time with that individual and allowed to unravel, you know, the gospel and the scripture that has been sitting on their hearts. And at times when you're sitting in closed doors and the Holy Spirit fall upon these individuals. So I would just put that out there and be honest, we're dealing with individuals who are fully devoted and been sold out to their faith and their worldview. 
and they're coming over here and nine times out of 10, when they see your Sunday Christian, it's a lot harder for individuals that truly are coming alone to preach the gospel to them. So a lot of the times they begin to think what we stand for is weak. That's why we get looked at as the weaker faith or the weaker worldview when we're compared to these other ideologies or these faiths or these worldviews because they see so much compromise within the Christianity and the Christian faith. So I would just stand on that, to be honest with you, and just understanding that at the end of the day, we're already up against the wall because these individuals are coming over here seeing a bunch of softness and weakness when it comes to us not even being willing to sacrifice when it comes to us showing up early to serve at church or when it comes to us making sure that we in our prayer closet are just standing to what we say we're on half the time it could just be our word and these individuals are watching that wow 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 i definitely think thank you so much seven dudes for that amazing response and i think from this whole zoom call you know since the start since diamond came on and started asking questions there's been like an accumulation i think here in this call and definitely i we very much value everything you just said and sometimes yes even even people from other belief systems being a lot more committed than christians you know and i can give so many testimonies even people coming out of sorcery divination and witchcraft being way more committed than even a believer and you know that speaks to us to be more disciplined like the fruit of this holy spirit Spirit is self-control and the after effect of self-control is discipline and that looks like many different things in our lives you know and seeing their commitment to the faith and I definitely agree with what you were saying about building relationship you know for the, those who are close at least in our proximity to be able to have a foundation of trust to to, so that they can know that we're sharing a faith of Jesus, not from a, I'm just going to put one number into my soul count, right? But I'm actually, I care about your soul and I care about where you to go because tomorrow is promised to nobody. So thank you so much, Seven Deuce, for your response. So Six, we would definitely would love to hear from you. So how would you approach the topic of evangelism over concerning our brother or believe, people who are believers in Islam? And if you can go ahead and also um, give a brief introduction about yourself. What's going on, everybody? My name is Six. I am a servant of the gospel of Jesus Christ uh, by way of Hog My Ministries. Uh, my answer Deuce gave you guys my answer. I was I was typing everything so Deuce could say it. And uh, no, but um, what came to mind was people don't care what you know until they know that you care, right? So just walking in love, walking in the authority that God has given us to our Muslim brothers and, and not necessarily like, I mean, Deuce alluded to everything that I would say, not, not trying to push the gospel down their throat, but really walking life out with them and showing them the gospel, being the gospel in front of them. So as they're seeing what you're preaching about, they're seeing it in real time, lived out. They're seeing the authority. They're seeing the dedication to God. They're seeing uh, the fruits of the spirit. They're seeing the prayer life, right? They're seeing you be patient in situations that, um, that maybe they would snap on or, or maybe they would react or respond in a different manner, right? There's so many different ways to skin a cat um, as it relates to, to ministering the gospel and evangelizing to someone who doesn't hold the same beliefs. And ultimately that comes with having a foundation of relationship, right? So once you, once you establish this foundation of relationship and, and they get to the place where they feel, you know what, this person really cares about me. They're not trying to just, like you said, add, add another check mark to the soul saved, right? It's not like we, we out here running a race to see who's going to win more souls it's this person really cares about what I have going on. So when there's a situation, when there's a circumstance in my family, in my mind, in my heart that I don't really know how to navigate and how to deal with, man, I feel like I, I feel like I could go talk to seven deuce and trust him and see what he has to say. Right. And then it presents the opportunity to sow the gospel and, and, you know, those small seeds add up. And a lot of times like deuce alluded to, and we all know, especially being young in the faith, you know, you're, you're gung ho. So you want to sow the seed, you want to water and you want to see the harvest right then and there. And that's not what the word says, right? The word says that some plants, some waters and God gives, gives the increase. So we have to trust that process. We have to trust that even though we might want to see everything pan out right then and there, there might still be a process that God is walking this person through to grow their faith in him even more. And we got to trust that process and be cool with it. Be cool with the part that we play. 
and just ultimately loving on people. That's that's what wins people. When you love on them, then you can share the truth, right? And like and like Seth um, alluded to, it's offensive. So if I don't have a relationship with you and you hit me with something that's extremely offensive nine times out of 10, I'm going to shut the door down. But if I know that you genuinely have my best interests at heart, or you genuinely, genuinely are going to tell me the whole uh, unadulterated truth, you're going to keep it 100 with me, then I'm, I'm open to hear what you might have to say, even if I don't like it, right? And I might walk away from the situation. They may walk away from the situations and the conversations that we have with them, so when it acting like they don't hear it. But the word is, is it's, it's inevitable to, to just walk away from it and then not penetrate you, right? It's going gonna, it's gonna to cut you to the tune where you want to pay attention or where you'll, you'll double back later on and be like, man, he said this. And you'll really meditate on that, right? It'll really open opportunity for God to speak to you. So we just have to be bold. You know what I mean? We have to, we have to live this the way that they see the world in their mind and what they stand for or what they believe. We have to show them that that's how we rock over here too. You believe what you believe wholeheartedly and you'll die for it. That's the same way we rock over here. And they have to see that. And once they begin to see that and they see that we love them genuinely, I feel like they, they'll be more inclined to hear what we have to say when it pertains to the gospel. Come on. Amen. Amen. I think that you also definitely adding to what, you know, um, someone was saying about that. I think it's so on point as well with you, because you said the gospel is offensive. So sometimes if you don't know someone, it could just come off as, you know, strong, but when you have a relationship or even when you're walking in the love of God, right? Because at the end of the day, all individuals, they want love, no matter what sphere you're coming from, uh, as, uh, as a natural humans are so gravitated towards love. And when we have the love of God inside of us, we can definitely speak to other individuals, you know, depending on different faiths that they can have um, from that place of a genuine stance in terms of looking out for them. So thank you both. Thank you, Six. And thank you, uh, Seven Deuce, for your responses. We are very, very appreciative of that. So with that being said, we're going to go ahead and wrap up now and we're going to wrap up with a prayer. So I want every single one of you, I'm going to give you all a prayer petition. Okay. I'm sure maybe this reminds you of like church back at, you know, when you grew up or at church at home. So first for Diamond, please. So if you can help us pray for a saw to paw conversions among the Taliban, these prayers are going to literally be only 30 seconds because of timing. Um, so if you can just help us pray for saw to paw conversions among the Taliban. Next is going to be for Brie. Brie, if you can pray for the protection of Christian and non-Christian women in the hands of the Taliban. Taliban. Okay. So that's going to be your mission. Like I said, only 30 seconds into praying. Okay. And you're going to go right after diamonds. Okay. And then it's going to be Sean. So Sean, my mission for you is to pray for Christians to be able to fellowship and connect with others, despite difficulties um, that they may be going through. Okay. So you're going to go right after Brie. Like I said, only 30 seconds per person. Um, and if you can please uh, help us pray on that that and then after that it's going to be five right after sean five if you can pray for the uh plans of the evil men who intend to kill christians to cancel out those assignments cancel out you know every attack of the enemy against believers and like i said you will go after sean and then after five is going to be threat if you can help us Pray for the organizations and the ministries who are getting resources and who are doing the foot road work in Afghanistan, helping the Christians come out of Afghanistan, or even just providing the resources. So like I said, 30 seconds, it should, can be really quick, you know, just praying and decreeing because there's so much power in prayer and one can put a thousand to flight, two can put 10,000. So I can't imagine how much you would put all together, all eight of us here. Um, and then after threat it's going to be 
seven deuce if you seven deuce and uh six can both help us pray for evangelism for god to bring more opportunities as believers to share the gospel of jesus with muslim believers as well right because we want to make sure because the bible says that every knee shall bow and every tongue shall proclaim that jesus christ is lord and his the gospel will go to every corner of the world as well and that you know as we um evangelize to any you know Muslim believer that we're walking in the love of God in itself. So we're going to go ahead first and now start with Diamond. Does anybody have any questions about what your mission is to pray for? Before I get, we start going on our prayer chain really quickly. It's going to be literally 30 seconds. So we should literally just be taking, I think, three or four minutes max in total. And then we will go ahead and end the call. Anyone have any questions? Everyone's good. Thumbs up. Everyone's good? good. Okay. Okay, perfect. So I'm going to go ahead and start with Diamond. So if you can go ahead and just lead us in prayer, Diamond. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity to come together, fellowship, and enter at your throne, Lord God, and make our requests known. Your word says when three, two or three or more are gathered, you are there with us. So Heavenly Father, we, we, uh, on behalf of your children in Afghanistan and all around the world that are being persecuted, Heavenly Father. We thank you that you operate through them, Lord God, your believers, to show love and mercy and grace to and to forgiveness to those who are persecuting them, Lord God. And I, I and I ask in that, Lord, they would see the light of Jesus Christ, Lord God, to be read, led to repentance and, and the knowledge of you, Jesus. I ask for a Damascus Road uh, uh, experience with, with the people the church, Lord God. I thank you just as you came to Paul that you would manifest yourself to them, Lord God. Reveal their darkness that they would be pushed towards the light, Lord God, and desire you, desire them, like Heavenly Father. We thank you for protecting those in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen to the living God. I just thank you right now, Father God, for who you are, Lord Jesus. Uh, right now, I denounce the works of the enemy right now, Lord Father God. The spirit of the Antichrist that is plaguing globally, Lord Jesus. He thinks that he is one and he thinks that he is gaining ground and he thinks that he has territory, Father God. But greater is you, Lord Jesus. You have already defeated death. You have already defeated the world, Lord Jesus. You said, Father the God that take heart because I have over already overcome the world, Lord Jesus. So we just thank you and we stand in it, Lord. And I uplift right now as a microcosm, my sisters that are battling over there, Lord, Father God, in Afghanistan, in the Middle East, Lord Jesus, that are being defiled, Lord Jesus. I thank you right now for a hedge of protection over them, God. I thank you, Lord Jesus, that these are not only my sisters, but these are your daughters. So I thank you right now for covering them, Lord Jesus, for protecting them, Lord Father God, for, for setting them on solid ground. And even if they were to lose their lives, Lord Jesus, mm -hmm. for their faith, Father God, for their faith in you, Lord Father God, their inheritance is the kingdom of heaven. So I thank you right now, Lord Jesus, that you are using them. You are using their testimony, Lord Father God, and their boldness to stand against the works of the enemy, Father God. So I submit them to you, Lord Jesus, that you are using them right now to be a testimony of your glory, Father God. We'll be victorious. I am united with my sisters right now, Lord Jesus, and knowing, Father God, that you are covering them. You are protecting them in your blood. Amen. First and foremost, Father, I want to say thank you, God. Thank you for Thank you for things like this, Father. Thank you for, for what you're doing, Father. And thank you for giving us your word so that we can be prepared for these things, Father. That we already know that things like this are going to happen, God, because it would just be even more intense if we had no knowledge that things like this are going to happen, Father. So thank you for preparing us. Thank you for uh, well, allowing us to be prepared, God. And now it is our turn to take up what we know and put it into practice, my God. And Father, what I want to pray for is divine connections, my God, that people over there, that people open up doors, Father, that people can find, I don't know, caves or anything like that. Father, I, I pray that there are ways that these believers can still meet because they are stronger together, my God. 
it, 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 it is the enemy's ultimate tactic to divide us and then to conquer over us, my God. But we need to stay together in, in times like these, God. So I pray for them over there, Father, that they stay strengthened, that they know that they have people over here praying for them, that they know this, God. I pray that they know this, that we are truly behind them spiritually to be there for them. And hopefully, if we can be there some way, shape, or form in a physical aspect, God, I pray that you raise up believers that want to go over there and fight, God, that want to go over there and be there for you, God. I pray that there are people that have the means that will use those means for your kingdom, God. Please, Father, strengthen them, embolden them over there. But, Father, strengthen us over here so that we can do all I can because we are one body. There is no difference. There is no difference. They are just under a different regime, a different dictatorship. They are just, that's all it is. But this could easily happen to us, God. May we never forget that, that this could easily happen to us. So, please, Father, strengthen them, strengthen us. May the gospel continue to be proclaimed. In Jesus' name, amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Lord God, we just thank you for who you are, God. You're such a good father, Lord. Uh, father, we just, uh, just thank you, Lord, that your word is the one thing that won't return void. Father God, uh, that it would always accomplish everything it's set forth to do. Lord, this is your word, not ours. You said all things work for the good of those who love you and are called according to your purpose, yes, God. Um, Lord God, that's your word, not ours. You said all things work. You said if God is for us, who could be against us? You also said that no weapon formed against us shall prosper, Father God. You said that uh, you're going to build your church, Father God. The gates of hell will prevail. And Lord God, even though these believers are suffering, Father God, um, Lord, I just pray right now, Lord, that you would just strengthen them, Lord. Give them a boldness like Stephen, Father God, uh, to stand up for uh for, for your son, Jesus, Lord, because we know when we stand for him, he stands for us, God. Uh, Lord God, we're so thankful for that, Lord. And I just pray, Father God, that you give them the strength, Father God, give them the words to speak. Father God, that would might even turn uh, some of their adversaries uh, towards the cross, Father God. Some of those uh, Taliban people that are uh, out there trying to kill those people, Lord, I pray that you would put words in, in the believers' mouths, Father God, that would turn their hearts, Lord, uh, the people with the sword, Father God. God, Lord, and that some of them would come out of this, Father God, with the scales off of their eyes as well, Lord, and I'm just uh, so grateful for you, Lord, and uh, we thank you, Lord, for what you did tonight, Lord, just pray, Lord, that you would just strengthen our brothers and sisters in Afghanistan and in the United States, Father God, and everybody who's had to lose someone uh, from this uh, this virus, Father God, we just pray, Lord, that you would strengthen them, Father God, and uh, just give us clear direction on, on where to go this season, in Jesus' name, amen. In Jesus' name, Father God, we lift up the organizations and the people that you have on the ground in Afghanistan, Father God. We pray for their for their protection, your protection over them, Father God, and that you keep them safe, uh, that you open up the doors uh, or the, the passageways for uh, resources and the things that they need uh, for transportation. Um, Father God, I know, I know that you know that they're, what their needs are, and I just pray that you tend to their needs, Lord God, keep them safe. Uh, continue to use them in ministry, Father God, continue to support them and provide for them and sustain them. And I pray that you multiply any seed that's sown to them or any anything that they're given as far as resources are concerned. I pray that you multiply them, Father God. I also pray, Lord, that you work with the uh, organizations, the missionaries, um, your people around the world, Lord God, and that you, you protect them the same way uh, for the missionaries in Haiti, Lord God. I, I pray that you, you find them, uh, for the people that were there on missions, find them and, and pull them out of any kind of danger they may be in, Lord God. Uh, we submit them to you. We surrender to your will, Lord, in Jesus' name. Dear Heavenly Father, we just come before you right now, Lord, asking for forgiveness of our sins that we've committed knowingly and unknowingly, Father. Please forgive us if we have dishonored your name or wronged your children in any way, Father. Please forgive us. We just come before you right now, Father. I just ask that the opportunities to share the gospel, Father, that you will open doors, Father, that we will be ready in and out of season, Father, and that our objective is to show the love of Christ, to show your love, Father, and understanding, Lord, that your word is enough, Father. Do not allow our flesh to get in the way when it comes to preaching your gospel, Father. Do not act, do not us allow to act like we have the power to save souls, Father, but it's truly only the gospel. It is you, Lord, who can save souls, Father. I just pray for my brothers and sisters, Lord, that when these Muslim refugees come over here, Father, that we greet them with love, the love of Christ 
Christ, Father, that we greet them with the gospel, that we greet them with relationship, Father. Allow us to open our doors. Allow us to be there for them. Allow us to show them what the true love of Christ is, Father. Yes. Let us denounce our flesh, Father. We thank you, Jesus, for this opportunity, Lord, and we're going to continue to fight in prayer. Let us pray. Let us fast, Father. Let us show them what this really is, Father, and that you are the only one God, Father. We thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In Jesus' name. Father, we just thank you and praise you for the opportunity to minister to uh, to our Muslim brothers and sisters. Father, we thank you that you have given us this opportunity, and we thank you for being well-equipped for this opportunity. We thank you for the right words to say. We thank you for the right actions to present. And we thank you that we do all of these things in love, with the love of Christ. Father, we thank you that we walk in boldness, that we walk um, as students of your word, that we walk submitted and surrendered to your word and your will, and that they are able to see our surrender to you in our lifestyle. Father, we thank you that the love of God just exudes in us, out of us, on us, and through us. That every word that we speak to them be your word, and that it goes forth with power. It goes forth with your anointing on it. And that we will see manifestations of uh, changed hearts, renewed minds, that our Muslim brothers and sisters will give their lives to you in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you and praise you for these opportunities. And we don't take them for granted. We count it an honor. And we, we say we're joyful that you have chosen us, whoever you shall choose, for these opportunities. And these opportunities will be fruitful in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, God, um, for all these also ministries. We're grateful for the ministries, God, um, of the voice of the martyrs. God, we just pray right now to cover the voice of the martyrs, global catalytic ministries and open door USA. Father God, we are just so grateful, God, for these ministries that you have used as a frontline warriors and resources. God, we just declare, Father God, that every single thing that was said on this uh, Zoom call, my God, in this definitely interaction amongst believers, amongst sons, sons and daughters of God, Father God, that is just covered by the blood of Jesus. And we just declare, Father God, safety, divine protection. And we come into agreement with every decree that was mentioned in this call. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, amen. And amen. So once again, we have so once again, um, I just wanted to end this call by giving acknowledgments and definitely a limelight on the following organizations that are definitely as frontline warriors over there in Afghanistan. They are the voice of the martyrs, Global Catalytic Ministries and Open Doors USA. Uh, if anybody watching, if you want to know how you can go ahead and help those in Afghanistan beyond prayer, it is also through giving. And these are definitely credible organizations to give a seed um, towards so that you can can go ahead and see the changes. Um, we have people here so excited for these ministries. So in this moment, I just want to thank every single one of you, Threat, Five, Bree, Diamond, Six, Sean, and Seven Deuce. Thank you all for being on the Zoom call. Thank you all for taking your time out. We have already spent an hour and 30 minutes um, but sometimes, you know, we're not even talking in, you know, time or speaking in eternity, right? So I can't believe it was just an hour and 30 minutes. But thank you all so much for being on this platform, for sharing your voice concerning the persecuted church in Afghanistan. And for anybody watching, we want to thank you for tuning into For the Record. <laughs>